modified version of the slide that I was showing yours um, at the Open Source Summit. Um, so essentially what we're going to discuss and what we're going to do, most of it is even, isn't even on the presentation technically. I just wanted to get a few points across um, in a uh, multifunctional standpoint. Um, so what we do at, social, at sociallyconstructed.online is we are a marketing platform primarily and a communication platform, but more importantly, we care a lot about how communities are developed and the way that businesses present themselves online. Um, so we're coming from a uh, kind of company-based background, um, but I personally have been um, pretty satellite to the open source community for a while now as an anthropologist and as a community uh, specialist. Um, so a little bit about us. Uh, so I'm actually an online community facilitator both in trade and also uh, academically. Um, and at the same time, I'm also a full stack marketer. So I bring to the project primarily a lot of um, theory crafting, a lot of building strategies, and a lot of implementation uh, in a very cultural respect. Uh, Dylan, on the other hand, is a little bit more technical and also pretty far deep into the anthropologist area. Uh, so he kind of covers a lot of my weaknesses. We tend to complement each other pretty well. Um, so when we have clients, uh, those clients largely have found themselves in the middle of communities um, like our target market is primarily people who don't necessarily understand the communities that they've developed over the internet. And open source communities uh, tend to be a little bit more advanced in that regard because you know what you're doing because open source in and of itself has developed a culture where people can more easily adapt to the identity or the role of a community manager or a project manager. Um, so the social currency metric system um, is the specific statement. Uh, it's the specific system that I'm going to show you now. Um, the social currency metric system was kind of built um, out of a more complex um, academic uh, strategy that has been around since 1940. This is not new and therefore it is not ours. Um, we want to stress that really importantly because when we composed the social currency metric system, uh, it was largely out of frustration on my part uh, because people kept trying to measure community, which is a social scientific construct, uh, using hard scientific um, sciences. They were missing it. They were trying to add numbers to everything. They weren't treating the anthropology of online worlds as an anthropology. In large part, that was because the way that anthropology views online communities and the measurement of those communities is at its heart very complex. We view it from default of complexity. Um, and that just does not work for a CEO or for an IT engineer or for a marketer who's trying to build a system. Um, so we oversimplified something called grounded theory analysis and another theory called social currency theory. Now, social currency theory came out of um, uh, sociology and the concept of social, social constructs where people are passing before they ever make a decision to give you money. They are already making a series of decisions um, that provide trust, uh, reputation, they build things. And the easiest way that I can explain it is ego. Um, it's kind of a negative word in the world. Uh, but if you look at ego as a form of social currency, something that's being awarded to an individual, that ego is less something that's bad and more of a threshold. So if I were to come into your community and say, you need to do this in your project, um, your response would probably be, who are you to tell me what I need to do with my project? What's wrong with you? But if I were to say, I built a multi-million dollar company based off of this strategy, and if you implement it in your business, I have utmost confidence that it will be successful for you. Now you're willing to hear me out a little bit more. I put in a qualifier and I put in a status that I have, a success that I achieved. And now you're willing to hear me out before you hit that ego threshold. That's a form of social currency. You've given me trust and reputation. 
what this system does is simplifies the uh, the calculation and the research of social currency into a system that any CEO will understand when it comes to the health of one's community. Uh, so how does it work? Uh, it uses an adapted version of social currency metrics um, that allows us to implement a system, a methodology across multiple departments to calculate and understand at least on a rudimentary level to begin with and then it can be abstracted or complicated as much as you like, depending on how simple the system is um, in your company. Um, and by going through these steps, collecting multi-channel qualitative sentiment, standardizing that sentiment, categorizing that sentiment, analyzing it, and then setting benchmarks, you can look at social currency. This may not look um, until you actually get into the system like much, uh, but we'll kind of go over it a little bit more. Uh, it was developed, and I think that this is really important to say, this was developed in the heat of us trying to calculate this. Um, so we have used this in anthropology. We've used this in companies. We've used this in nonprofit organizations and in um, communities. And then um, this is kind of the end goal. So kind of keep this slide in mind when I actually show you the system. I know that it's kind of enigmatic right now, but uh, once we pop over to it here in a moment, you'll see. Um, you'll see the first row is pretty typical of a marketing department. What are the impressions? What are the leads? Uh, what's converting? The second one is pretty typical of a support department. Uh, so here's tickets, here's what's been resolved, here's what's being held up, here's what's escalated. The last one is us. So we have boiled down social currency to five main characteristics. Transparency, how people uh, view or connect with your brand. Utility, whether it's even useful in the first place. Consistency, whether or not you've been there and have a track record of having done this reliably. Merit, uh, whether or not that track record over reliability and that utility has actually led to something. And then trust, how much can they trust that you will be there moving forward into the future? Now, um, with each of these, we'll go a little bit further into depth because you're probably going to have a lot of questions about what the definitions of these are. So I was, I was just going to ask, do you have a slide that mentions the definitions of these? Yes, and uh, we'll actually get into that because that's a really important part of the first step here uh, regarding, or second step, standardizing sentiment analysis. Okay. So we're going to pop over to the system. This okay. is the system, and you'll notice that it's in an air table. It's on a spreadsheet. This can be as simple as you want it to be. It can be as complex as you want it to be. Um, ultimately, what this is, is a spreadsheet that an AI can read and a spreadsheet that multiple departments within a project or a company um, can operate under. So at its heart, it's pretty simple. Um, so here you have customer sentiment. Right now, we pulled all of these from Google reviews from one of our prior clients, uh, LaborJack SCMS demo. And uh, you'll see this second list really appreciated how easy it is to book labor for a move, a quick follow-up email to confirm, and then two helpers showed up on time and did a great job packing our belongings into a moving van. Now, um, that kind of demonstrates a lot about LaborJack's services, but that's not necessarily something that you can put into a dashboard. It's not something you can put into numbers. It's social currency that is being awarded, but you can't count it. So what we do is we do something called abstraction, which basically allows you to take in keywords. And right here we have the simplest of the simple, two different abstractions. So the first one is categories. So the sentence is about the technology, it's about the payment process for LaborJack, and then it's about the physical services. And then what this person has awarded is trust and merit, but that means nothing. It means nothing until we pop over to this category codex. So a codex is essentially a agreed upon list of definitions, examples, and then the two most important columns are when to use it and when not to use it. Now, this is the first week of implementation where we normally ask a company during the first week, what does transparency mean to you? If a customer were to come up and say something, 
what level of trust do you have that what they're saying has to do with transparency in your company? Do you think that they understand your company more? And we actually ask the company, hey, can you please give us a definition? When you see transparency in your customer sentiments, what does that look like? And in week two, we test those definitions. We go out to the community, we go out to the target audiences, and we publish social posts that say, hey, in an effort to be more transparent, we would like to know what it means to you. Can you please answer this question for us? And then afterward, we have a definition that the community has agreed upon, that the people inside the company the company have agreed upon, and then we can decide when to tag and when not to tag. These definitions are very specific to the community involved because they change from community to community. So the codex is quite possibly the most important part of the social currency metric system. Now, once you understand how trust, merit, transparency, and utility are defined, you can start awarding them into points. And this is where the money is. This is our entire company. Dylan can and I, I have worked really, really hard can to make this a thing. Can we ask a few questions here? Um, or do you want to keep going? Can we wait until after this pivot table? Because this is sure. kind of where everything comes together. Go ahead. Um, so here we have a pivot table that basically just looks at the table and it's a very manual process to begin with, but um, as you start building it, it starts systematizing and you can start uh, putting an AI on the back end of it. Um, so you have different channels, Google reviews, Yelp reviews, tech tickets, and across those channels, transparency, utility, consistency, merit, and trust can be counted. And I want you to kind of shift your thinking now from this ethereal up in the air kind of sense of social currency to pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, dollars. And this is really important because they build up on each other. Now, you're also going to find, just like this example, the total amount, the total number seems to suggest there's a lot of utility going on here. The messages seem to suggest labor tax is very useful, but their transparency is really low. What happened there? And this is where you start to see the usefulness of the social currency metric system. The utility is really high, so they love LaborJack. But if you were to put LaborJack in a group of its competitors and you were to ask people to identify uh, the service that they used, a low transparency score probably suggests no, they wouldn't be able to. They would not be able to tell the difference between LaborJack and its competitors. So transparency at a level uh, of two suggests that maybe they should launch a campaign. Hey. Um, here's a behind the scenes of LaborJack. Here's a connection. Increase that transparency score using the social currency garnered in utility. And that's the uh, pivot table. That's how the system works. So you're basically just taking qualitative data, channeling it into abstract content, labeling it according to the social currency metrics. And then at the end of it all, you have somewhat of a gauge of what social currency is being garnered and when. Question, can we ask questions now? Uh, yeah, so okay. um, I hope you don't mind. I know that was uh, no. extra long. No, 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 that's totally fine. Um, so there was one in the chat, the difference between social currency and reputation. Mm -hmm. Um, and Dylan might be able to talk about that a little more as well. Um, but ultimately, social currency is a currency that is garnered on an individual basis. Reputation is the ability for you to exchange money markets, so to speak. So people offer you enough social currency that you can put it on a resume, for instance. And then when you give it to a new community, that's your reputation. So your reputation internal to the community is the social currency other people can see. And to, to tack on to that, one of the big parts of anthropology is measuring not just how communities at large feel about you, which is kind of that reputation, but um, 
how individuals with basically how to isolate individual voices from the crowd. And this is kind of what that, what that helps to do is that yes, you know, ordinary um, metrics tracking systems, they might have a score. They might be able to identify in a little click box or whatever, what they liked or didn't like about your company, but they don't really have a way, like they can leave you a comment. Sure. But who's going to take the time to go through hundreds or thousands of comments to see each individual person's, what they liked or didn't like about your company. What this lets us do is it doesn't help you go through each comment on an individual level, but it helps you get the gist of essentially what that comment said, what they liked or disliked about the company, and basically turn that qualitative data by a process kind of known as coding in, in anthropology, um, turn it into actionable intel so you know that not just overall is your reputation good, but they really like how useful you are as a service, but going back to that pivot table, but they they don't really understand how you work or why they should choose you over the competitor. So this helps, oh, I'm sorry, I think I just shut off my video there. Um, this helps not only provide more metrics about, or provide more communication from a crowd at large, but also see, hey, individuals, within this crowd are are really liking this aspect of your business while they think in mass that you can change in such and such a way so it's at the end of the day a way to collect better information from that crowd okay so if you could you go back to the other um table not this one yeah all right, so the sentiment, the unit, the unit here is the entire post. Is that correct? Yeah, so that's going to be the the comment or the um, review or whatever it might okay. be. That's the. the and if it's a really long post, the comment or a review, then the entirety of that review would be in that cell. Mm -hmm. So um, to kind of clarify. Um, this is a very, it's a demo, so it's meant to be very, very simplified. So in this circumstance, um, right now, an entire common is counting as an entire cell. So abstracting that data um, allows us to kind of view three different social currency classifications within a comment. Um, for larger pieces of information, um, you can have the system look and anytime there's a line break, it will break its cell mm -hmm. so that you can start calibrating based on independent lines, which mm -hmm. is something that a more complicated system like MaxQDA, um, let's actually pull this up. This is, this is a more complex implementation uh, and this is actually used in academics. This is uh, what Dylan and I used in our first class to uh, and it's a little bit more complex, but you can see at the heart of it in this screenshot, it's more or less the same thing. It's just more complicated. Okay. Um, and then the channel, that's fairly obvious. And the categories, how were these, how are these defined? What are you using to, mm -hmm. but um, if you go back, so even just the term, how do you loud? How do you um, justify that customer service or payment price? What's the the logic behind choosing those more than just is, are these literature informed? Are these based on data that you have that has led you to these? The so or, um, take, so the, this is all based off of that, that anthropological coding, which essentially takes interviews and, mm -hmm. um, you know, writing submissions, all sorts of stuff and breaks it into, you know, typically 10 to 15 categories of information that you can break down, um, sort information by all of that. A lot of these, um, a lot of these are, Essentially, when you see a pattern coming up again and again and again, um, the, the, the simplest way to answer that is you note it down. If you keep seeing people discussing the, the service of a company, maybe service is going to be one of your categories. If they keep bringing up the price, that's going to be one of your categories. Essentially, what those categories are is when you've been looking at this qualitative data and when you see trends coming up over and over and over again, that's how those categories are generated. 
obviously you could work with um, maybe the company that, that you're attempting to help out with this, see, hey, what are you wanting to focus on? But a lot of these are gonna come up organically when you're searching through a lot of that data. Okay. And so these are the, the categories are data derived by the individuals who are looking to understand, to get more clarity. So, um... To kind of uh, add this, uh, in marketing, there's a uh, very old message, proof, uh, truth is in the trend, the power is in the pattern. Um, so with anthropology, when you're looking at qualitative data, there are things that tend to come up a lot. They, they tend to trend a little bit. Um, so it's a pattern that you recognize. And at first, it starts very vague. It's just like they're mentioning this kind of. Mm -hmm. But as you move forward and you start to codify it, you start to agree on these definitions and then test whether or not those definitions are accurate, um, you start to see that ethereal uh, concept solidify into a specific categorical term. Um, cool. And in some cases, you can uh, say from the get-go, I want to know what this qualitative data is saying about how people uh, experience my purchasing funnel. Um, so you can actually like set a category that says purchasing funnel, and then you can go through all that qualitative data with purchasing funnel as an idea. Mm -hmm. The complexity and the problem with that is that uh, each individual going over comments, and especially when you start to add entire departments to the problem, um, you start to get people who are viewing that data from a very specific lens that mm -hmm. kind of changes the customer sentiment. So what this does is it flips that concept on its head. Instead of you saying, I want to know what's happening with payment price, that data is just coming out as you're reading this. It's grounded in the data that already exists, not any preconceived notions about what you're looking for. Fair. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I have a question, please. Uh, sorry for the background noise. I just want to find out uh, from what uh, our speaker was saying, it seems as if the social currency is data driven. And now we need to, if that is true, we need to know how to collect that data because it can also influence the kind of uh, currency in double code that we may end up having. And it's very hard thing, to hear Armstrong. Yeah, you're, sorry? you're very hard to hear Armstrong. Okay, yes, uh, sorry, I'm inside the bus, but that's why. But can you hear me now? Yeah, better. Okay, I'm asking that. Since the concept of the social currency is data driven, mm -hmm. this also suggests that the quality or the category of data that we collect to derive that data also should be like the it's like the gold field where we have to say we do a selective mining, right? So because if we don't have the right data, if we don't have the right data, that currency itself can fluctuate. If I understand your question correctly, you want to know um, if the categories and the classification is dependent upon the quality of the data coming into the system? Yes, yes. Yes, um, and that's just an inherent issue with Google Analytics. It's an inherent issue with any numbers thing. If, you're, uh, if your database is uh, not built correctly, if you have holes in the funnel, uh, if there are certain things that you just are not calculating, or if uh, you have to compare um, page views to user sessions or something like that, um, just like apples and oranges, um, then your system's not going to work. Uh, and that's why when we look at uh, the actual implementation process of the social currency metric system, you see the sixth line is evaluate pitfalls and adjust the system. Uh, because, I mean, it's another old marketing adage uh, sometimes the data you don't have is more important than the data you do. Um, so we have to figure out um, what voices aren't being heard in the system. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I have another question. So um, if you go, yeah, back to this. So the clearly the categories column is your grounded theory-ish part of this. And so um, when you talk about you being able to derive categories from the data that you have, is the you the two of you or is it the individuals who are collecting the data? And the reason that I ask this question is that 
co um, so a lot of us on this do a lot of qualitative research and we've been down the coding path before and it's complicated right like it's not just reading data and just things just come out <laughs> and it's super clear and we have guarantees of service on the categories that we derive and we have reliability between our raters that is are actually doing these kind of things there's all sorts of right as you are familiar with all sorts of hurdles that have to be crossed to confidently talk about the the things that you have in that third column right so how do you if if you two are doing it that's one thing if you're asking individuals to do it say out in the field that seems to be more complicated because there's a not only is it saying look at the data and derive categories but there's a certain amount of methodological rigor that needs to be carried to the field as well to be able to do that. So how do you, could you tell, help me understand that part of it? Yeah. Um, do you want me to take that, Dylan, or? I, it doesn't matter. I can weigh in afterwards as well. Okay. Um, so the heart of this system um, is born out of the frustration with people not understanding that communities are a social science. Um, they're not machines. Um, and the qualitative data has gone largely ignored, primarily because it is complex. It is hard to process. And a lot of people are like, well, if we can tag a number, if we can tag customer behaviors, why would we ever care about their customer sentiment? Um, and that always infuriated me. It always frustrated me. And it got to a point where I had to explain um, these grounded theory analysis and anthropological concepts simpler and simpler and simpler and simpler until the point it boiled down to the social currency metric system. Mm -hmm. The social currency metric system at its heart answers a really difficult problem that I'm sure Ray Pike has talked about, other community managers have talked about. Uh, you can't put a number on your community, but you can try. How do you do that? Um, so the social currency metric system is at its heart a simplification of something that is inherently complex. Mm -hmm. That is not to say that you are limited to the simplicities and the complexities have to be thrown out the window. We can easily add a column here. We can insert just to the left because at its heart, this is a spreadsheet. Um, it's the exact same thing that um, uh, people are doing in all sorts of anthropological areas. It's just a matter of trying to put the marketing metrics that companies are looking for, that projects are looking for, the simplicity of dashboards into the complexities of a social currency metric system. Um, so you can abstract this as much as you want. You can build those as much as you want. The one major issue is that whatever you do, you have to be very careful about consistency. People need to be using these terms consistently, which means there needs to be a conversation about, okay, so I'm noticing this in the data. Can we please have a collaboration meeting where we start to tease out and discuss what this concept is for us? And then we're going to go out to the community, confirm that definition, and then we're going to fill out this form. Like technology, tradition, and troubleshooting, because they don't have these, I don't recommend using them as tags. Um, in the demo. And we did this on purpose to kind of show what the problem is when multiple departments are tagging technology, but there's never a rule as to when you can and cannot use it. So piggybacking onto that, there is a problem with people who are not trained in specifically qualitative data attempting to analyze qualitative data, it, as you said, it, it generally ends in a steaming wreck and a very not pretty one at that. So there is going to be always a, a question of whether guidelines will be followed and this will be a successful implementation for them because of that. But there's also what we do provide at the beginning in the implementation of this SCMS system is we do provide them 
an overview of essentially what we're looking for and then all of those definitions. If they would like to go on further, create more of their own, if they're looking for something different, they are always free to reach back out to us. Typically, we do have a service. Dylan, you cut out? Where, sorry. Okay. Can you say okay. that again? Um, we, from, from where did I cut out? Sorry. I, I heard you. Okay. Well, it's, um, we do have a service whereby we will continue to provide the sort of um, service to them, essentially. But for the most part, we're giving them basically the, the framework and expecting them to reach out to us if that framework needs to be needs to be changed. And that's kind of being communicated to them that, hey, if you're looking for other stuff, um, go ahead, give us a call. We will help you. If they decide they have got it down and they want to attempt to do that themselves, unfortunately, there comes a point where if somebody is dead set on doing the work themselves, whether or not they're able, they're going to do it themselves, whether or not they're able. All we can do is try to be as in contact as possible if they have any further questions. So that is one of the weaknesses is that really does depend a lot on the customer actually being vocal about parts of the implementation they may need further help on. Okay. So I have a question. Who is the target market for the system? Is it um, commerce sites? Great question. Large enterprise and, and how do you measure success when you work with your customers? Wonderful question. Um, so to begin with, we have four main um, customer avatars, so to speak. So there's community managers, uh, of which this will benefit greatly. Um, there's analytics professionals who um, are struggling to answer the question, how do you measure community? Um, so when it comes to analytics, we want to make sure that they get the tools, the training, the development, and the plans necessary uh, to properly study communities. Because um, I don't know about Dylan, but it's my raison d'etre. It's my reason for living um, to ensure that anyone who enters a community is impacting it positively. And in my view, it's this uh, that can do that. It's teaching them um, how to measure and understand community in a way that physically empowers the community. Because your decisions are no longer being made on stats and metrics, but they're now being made on the basis of people's conversations and feedback. Um, that's the heart of the social currency metric system. So um, primarily data analysts and community managers, marketers will find it very useful, especially in terms of search engine optimization. Because uh, once you turn it on, it's just going to give you strategies and thoughts and um, action items that you need to do. And the reason is because of this pivot table, uh, where, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a high utility score and a low transparency score, uh, there are plenty of things that you can do to enhance and improve that. Ultimately, um, the goal is if you have an online community and you don't know how to gauge or understand it, if you have a target audience that is very vocal and you don't know how to gauge or understand it, this platform is for you. So is this actually a software as a service? Is it a... Is it a consulting framework? Um, it's a business installation. Um, so you install a methodology into your business and uh, you work with us in order to get the technology to a point where you have the information and the data. And then from that point in time, we train and teach the departments to use it. And at scale, yes, it's a software um, because you give an AI the ability to read the keywords, offer suggestions, and then ultimately it will be able to read it. But I will never, you will never hear me say that once the AI understands the sheet, you're done. This, people are not posting comments on Facebook for bots to read them, they're posting them on Facebook for us to read them. Um, so ultimately when you get to a point where you have 3 million comments on your platform, um, you'll need an AI to read and keyword that and stuff like that. But there should always be a time where you have a person from a department looking at the channels they are responsible for. If it's a customer service manager, 
um, then they need to be uh, coding support tickets. If it's a social media manager, they need to be coding social channels. Um, and on a weekly basis, there needs to be people coding at least 30 comments, spend an hour, possibly two out of the week, coding those comments, have a meeting, like an hour long meeting before that, basically going over the comments, talking about what you noticed, seeing if there are any trends, coming up with ideas based on the social currency metric system, uh, collaborating, doing your due diligence as a quality analyst. Um, and that's what that is. It, it's a QA meeting. It's a uh, meeting for everyone to come together and get on the same page. Would you call this a form of, of um, sentiment analysis? Yes. So I want to, um, also in the interest of time, thank you very much for the demo. I know we have many more questions. And in a, as a way for moving forward, maybe we can continue the discussion on the mailing list. We're going to post the meeting minutes there for sure, and then we can continue working there. Uh, just as a, as, as a sentiment before we move on to other topics, is this, um, the social currency metric system is something that we as chaos think is valuable adding to our toolbox. That is really my question why I asked Samantha and Dylan to join us today. So I mean, so one of the things that Samantha had said, and I completely agree that we, we can't um, get rid of the qualitative component, the social component uh, as part of understanding how communities work and the health of communities and how they're moving forward. I a hundred percent agree. Um, and I think one of the things that we kind of take to heart here in the chaos project is none of the solutions or things that we do is going to solve the world perfectly at all, but the efforts that we make try to provide better transparency on the things that we're trying to take a look at. So, um, that's kind of how I, 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 I heard you, you talking. I don't know that this will solve every issue around understanding um, the social components, but it's it's step in the right direction, right? And I, I don't mean that like, I mean, I mean that very positively. So I, I applaud you in that. Um, I think in terms of, of connection, I'd, I'd need to get a better sense of kind of what, uh, what what the business is here, and maybe we don't have time to talk about it here, and then what um, what you're looking to potentially standardize in terms of what you're doing and just where those points of connection might be. That needs to be a little bit clearer for me just before I, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think I need a little bit more clarity. Um, that's and, all. Um, Dylan or I can talk about that, but I know yeah. Dylan, you were talking to me um, about all of this and you had some pretty clear points on uh, what exactly that would entail as well. Do you want to answer that question? So that's kind of getting into a, a much bigger question of business models and such. I don't yeah, know. We can, yeah, we can talk about can this. That offline. I was, I was going to say, I would, I would absolutely love to discuss it. This just doesn't seem to be the, the, the channel right here. And I, I trust me, I would love to go into it, but I also just, want to be here for another three hours. I'll ping you out of band. No, you're not. You're not setting up an, an external call if it's going to be three hours. You're not setting that up very well either. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I exaggerated slightly, but okay. I, I would absolutely. I do have to to run in just a little bit here, but I would absolutely love to collect contact information and set up a, a time for that discussion because it's definitely a discussion. Here, I have both of your emails that they are I think circulated. So. Yeah, I'm happy to be part of that discussion as well. Great. Um, Likewise, so I've been listening, but I haven't been on here. This is Hello, Okay. okay. Um, do you want to uh, create a way for us to answer any questions or anything like that that you have, um, like in external meetings? We're more than happy to meet with you all privately or after kind of tooling around in the system or anything like that. Um, There's always the mail list for people to post questions. And that's always, that's probably the most sensible place, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Samantha and Dylan. Yeah, thanks, Samantha. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you for giving us so much time. I know that we weren't exactly expecting it to take as long as it has, but mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for uh, listening and looking. And 
I truly want to say thanks for uh, giving the social currency metric system a chance. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll yeah. we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Yeah. Feel free to stay on if you want to listen in and see what else we do. Uh, no, but I'm to, unfortunately, to I have to run. I apologize. Yeah, no. I have another meeting, unfortunately, as well. So no problem. No worries. Take care. All right. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye. So, Gary, maybe we'll just move right to your, you had the Wikipedia page. Yeah, so I sent an email this morning because I was looking for chaos in Wikipedia, which we all know is the first place people search after they're done with Google. And the, the only mention of chaos right now is a three-sentence mention on the Linux Foundation page. Yep. I thought we have so much more to offer. Now that we have a release metrics, we have our own conference series, we have software, there's so much more that people need to know about. And yes, we have the website, but unless it's in Wikipedia, it's not really true. So I think we should <laughs> put it in Wikipedia. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that's a great idea. And, and, and it's so, great. Yeah, as I was uh, thinking about this on the flight back from San Francisco, uh, San Diego, I put out, uh, put together this outline, which I Can you drop it in the chat? Email, and I also have here, let me put it in the chat or I can put it in the meeting minutes. And I think most of the content that I was thinking about is already in uh, our website. We just need to port it over. And yeah, I, mean, I agree. It would make no sense to rewrite. Yeah, and Wikipedia likes to have references. And so one of the things in creating this page would also be to attach references and footnotes. I, I honestly have zero objection to this. So I guess then uh, Everyone. But maybe other people ca comments. Um, I think it's a I think it's a really good idea, uh, but I think we should also be aware of the uh, when we're adding all of this stuff, we're adding overhead. So there's social media, there's Wikipedia, there's the website, there's blog posts. Like all of this, all of this communication media uh, has to be maintained and monitored. So. Uh, it's something I've mentioned prior. I, I kind of think there should be a, a working group that uh, that kind of focuses on this stuff. And I, I think maybe that should be part of this conversation. Good, I agree. As a general rule, I'm not terribly excited about diluting the channels of communication, especially for a small organization like this. And that basically echoes what Kevin was saying. Okay. Is it about is it about um, just like the n amount of work that people have to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, just simple Damn continuity of message. If you update one, mm -hmm. you've got to update all. You literally doubled your work. And, okay. you know, I think, and also, you know, you're setting up a potential for two sources of information. Well, I heard this on the Wikipedia page. I heard this on the website. Better to have one canonical source of information. Okay. And then our social media can throw everybody to that source. To the web page. Yeah, if that's what you decide to do. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to drop the web page. That would be weird. At this point, yeah. too much work has gone into yeah. that. Yeah, I'm just saying it, it's an either or. It doesn't have to be a web page, but I'm just yeah. saying pick one. I gotcha. Yeah, we yeah, need to have actually, some consistency in our message. Yeah. We did move off the, remember we had the, does anybody remember the original, original wiki at the Linux Foundation? Yes. yes. <laughs> Believe it or not, I think that is still accessible on the web. That needs to be shut down. Well, uh, as a collaboration platform, it just didn't scale. It, right, exactly. It just didn't scale as a collaboration platform. So that's why we made the moves to, to, to GitHub and to uh, the web page that we did. All right, these are good points. Um, any well, other? Maybe we can keep the Wikipedia page really short so that it's not really a source of complete information. It's more 
a point of, hey, chaos is actually a thing. Yeah, I mean, it could be it could be useful as a billboard page. It says, hey, here's Project Atomic. Here's what it's about. Here's a little something about it. And if you want to know more, get to the website. And yeah. that would be your current thing. There's nothing wrong with having it as a billboard site. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Any other comments? Very good. So then I'll build up this billboard idea and try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Can you um, get our logo in there? I will put a logo in there. I have not added it yet. Okay. Okay. Cool. That was great. Okay. You know, this, Thank was you, this, everyone. this was all you today. <laughs> this is great. Why don't we why don't we keep it at that? Um I will say it was really great to see everybody in San Diego. And I, I think a lot I think our sessions were a big success. I think it was just fantastic. So sorry I yeah. couldn't make everybody's session all the time, but Anyway, it's great. I'll echo that. It was fantastic to see everybody. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, cool. Why don't we leave it at that? Next week is the official meeting, so I'll send out an agenda. Um, and then towards the end of next week, I'll be sending out the meeting minutes from the chaos board that we had last week. Just waiting for any comments or changes that people have. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Yep. And All right. Uh, for uh, addition to this, I'll be yeah. sending out the videos to the speakers. Oh yeah. Uh, by tomorrow, hopefully. Okay. So it will be a it will be a link to a Google, and they can view and uh, uh, share their thoughts, and then we can post it on the okay uh, YouTube. Okay. Thanks. I will say Andy has already approved this without even seeing it, <laughs> so you don't have to send it to Andy. It's just one less one less person to send it to. So <laughs> got that, Vinod? Yes. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, till next week or till whatever meeting I see you in next, or till next week, whenever that might be. All right. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Here for all the bringing right. this together. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.